do you uh have you ever ran into any uh, bad situations either from like going to the hood to play or even just you disrespecting somebody basically through your playing and have them get angry at you or something like that yeah, well, I mean, we're bringing three <laughs> security guards now. Really? Oh, 100%. Oh, wow. <laughs> Got to. So, yes, I had some run-ins, but nothing super crazy. Like, when I, when I do go to a hood or, like, play anywhere, I try to show everybody love, you know what I mean? And on the video, I try to show it true to its form, you know? Right. Like, sometimes, like, if I play for two hours, we, the vlog ain't going to be two hours. You know what I mean? We're going we're gonna to narrow that down. But for the most part, yeah, if somebody gets off, I throw it on the video, So it's and I'm showing them love and... If they even agree to play, they kind of know what comes with it. Like mm. people who don't like me or not, they don't usually even want to play. But right. Um, but one time I, I was playing uh, in the CBA, you know, Chinese Basketball Association. That's their NBA. Okay. So I was playing a preseason game. And uh, the dude that was guarding me is like this big 6'5 dude, right? So he started to get tired because I was playing my street ball style play. It's like second quarter. And uh, I did a move. And he slipped and fell, right? He like did the splits real fast. And I hit the jumper. And even before that, I hit a couple jumpers, right? So the, they're at home playing their preseason game. They don't know anything about street balls. Kid was only like 21 or 22. Wow. But we were doing our thing, and next thing you know, the crowd's on our side. But this is their home home base, right? So then I came down, tried to go off the dude's head. He moved his head, though. Like, he moved it to the side, so, like, ricocheted off his head. It was all ugly. So I grabbed <sighs> it back. And I forget. Like, he don't know street ball. He, th- he don't even know that move. So he yeah. just thought I threw the ball to his head, like, like I was trying to punk him or something like that. Like, right. like it was straight disrespect, not sport. So he picked me up, he threw me, and then like both benches cleared. And they went viral. It's on my channel. Oh fuck. Yeah, I missed was, that one. It was on ESPN that night, like wow. top ten. <laughs> yeah, I mean bouncing the ball off somebody's head. I could see how that would go over poorly easily. You call it the heezy? Off the heezy. Off the yeah. heezy. You got to like pick that. and choose. Yeah. You know, with this era, though, the hypersensitive era, mm. it's funny. That move been turned into, like, the most controversial. Really? Back in the day, like, hot, I seen, like, Steve Francis was the first player I saw do that. And then I saw, like, Hot Saw and my, my AO, my OGs. They used to use it all the time. And it was, like, just hilarious. Like, yeah. it doesn't even hurt, though. You know what I mean? People did it to me. Like, it's it, if you do it right off the forehead. The flyest shit is the one I seen you do where you do it and then you hold it there for a second, like on their head, oh, and then you pull it back because that must be really offensive. I try to do that. <laughs> I try to do that one more because the the hit, you know, sometimes it'd be a little low. It might go off the nose. Oh yeah. Somebody yeah. piss, but that pissed me off. Yeah. yeah, I like I like the roll the roll off the head. I try to do that more nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> when did the security guards come into place? Though you, something must have happened when you were going to one of these neighbors to feel like you needed that, right? Well. A few things happened. Uh, we had a stalker situation. A stalker. Stalk. Real oh life stalker. God. So, 2000 and it's been going for 10 years too. By the way. What? So I some dude in uh, West LA. I was like near Century City. I was try, I was at a Kinkos back in the day. Like I didn't even have a printer or nothing. I'm trying to like send a contract back. Uh-huh. You know, sign and send a contract. A printer ain't working. So some dude comes over and he's like breathing over my shoulder real hard. He's standing up. I'm sitting down. And he was like, yo, you're professor, right? And I was like, uh, yeah, what's up? You know, and he was like, yo, I need to play you one-on-one. You know what I'm saying? I can't find no competition in the city. And then I looked up to him and I realized, like, dude's high or something. You know what I mean? Okay. He's completely off. So he started going off for, like, 10 minutes about how you need to play me and all this. And so finally when I got to talk. I'm like, bro, you're UCLA right here, the best competition in the country. I was like, <laughs> You don't need to play me. He's like, nah, nah, nah. I think I need to play you, though. You know what I'm saying? You got these certain moves. It's, it's kind of like me. Like, I'm like that, too. So I was like, okay. Like, I was like, bro, I was like, honestly, I travel a lot. I said, if I'm in town, I hoop at a church. It says, like, an hour away. So he's like, oh, what church? What's the address? So I'm like, all right, all right bro. So I, like, at this point, I just want to get out. I just got to leave. So I, was, so I said, Shepherd Hills Church. I wrote it down. Shepherd of the Hills. I said, it's in Porter Ranch. He's like, well, when do you play? I'm like, oh, open gym like Wednesday at noon. The truth is I went there like once a month, right? <laughs> and I knew if he came up there, it's a controlled setting. It was real chill. You know what I mean? It's like an outreach ministry situation. So that next Wednesday, I didn't go up there. I, I was just like chilling in my house, but I got a call. And this is like the head of the sports ministry. And he's like, are you okay? And I was like, oh, yeah, what's up? And he's like, some dude came over here looking for you. And uh, we had to evacuate the whole church. He said he was going to blow it up if you, since you weren't here. And so I was like, Yo, wow. So he got arrested. All that. Then he started blowing up my booking email. He's like, yo, this is a so-and-so, man. He's like, I went to jail because of you. Uh, He's like, real adamant that we still need to play one-on-one and meet up. And I was young at the time. I like responded. Like, I shouldn't have responded. You know what I mean? But I went back and forth. Then dude popped up on me like two or three more times. 
and and so that really let me know like like security is a necessary yeah. and then you know like i said going to who people try to screw up the production sometimes near fights uh i've had other stalker situations a, more, a little more lightweight than that but like really yeah so security i found is this super necessary did yeah. that situation ever resolve itself with this other crazy guy dude got locked up and then he got out and then he pulled up on me like two or three more times just seen dude like what was that three years ago or something maybe three years ago i saw a dude again he, he was at a kid's camp at the same church i host i host a camp there every summer and i was signing autographs taking selfies with the kids or whatever and this dude popped up he had a hat on though so he's kind of like disguised he's like hey what's up man it's me uh i'm blanking i can't remember dude's name i don't need to say it but he was like, remember, I went to jail because of you. And like, oh my he's like, God. he's like, but it's all good now. You know, we should hoop. Like, we should get up. And and I was just like, hey, bro. like I had security at the time. Like, Have hey, you seen him play? Can you can you get it? Dude? Have you seen? Is he nice? No idea. You don't know. <laughs> he told me. Told me he was a one. He told me he was. Elite. That's the most insulting thing about all this. He went to jail, and you still don't even know if he's any good. He showed. Well, one time I had a I had a, a meetup. I only did like a couple meetups, but it was like in Santa Clarita when I used to live out there. And he pulled up to that and he was like hot. He had his ball in his back. He was like high, though. He kept like walking to a fence and then he'd come back and walk to the fence and come back. And I don't think we can even take it to the court. Dude was just like, right, whatever. So anyway, hope he's all right now. But yeah, yeah. Was, so thing, things like that kind of showed me that security was not necessary, you know? Crazy. Yeah. That's wild. I know. Um. Yeah, but it, it's pretty amazing, like, the reaction that you get. Like, I've seen you pull up on just, like, a bunch of young-ass kids in a vlog, and, I mean, they're all screaming before you even get near the court. Like, that's the fucking professor. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. That's him. <laughs> I was like, bro, that must feel amazing pulling up to, like, any basketball court in America be able to get a reaction like that. That's incredible. Yeah, no. Nah, I feel like it's humbling because with Ann one, you know, we were up. And then mm. it was it was not so to feel the down makes you appreciate the up that much more. And the know? best part is now nobody can take it from you because you're in charge of your <laughs> destiny as far as this business goes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's a good look. It's a blessing for sure. Definitely. Yeah. How much work do you put into doing like collabs and stuff like that? Because I seen you playing uh, uh, doing a TikTok with Sweetie in a, in a vlog and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, how did you even get lined up with that? And and does that? I noticed you didn't even bother to use that in the title and thumbnail. You you made it more about somebody talking shit to you uh like yeah. your tried and true classic theme yeah yeah so uh just through different connections like that one was with uh this agency with these two cats that were pretty cool mm. uh, we had talked about working out nothing has come of it uh thus far but um they were kind of trying to like show and prove so he's like yo he's like um I love your videos. I watch and one forever these two dudes were like longtime supporters but they do content for like The Rock and Saweetie. Mm. And Sweetie, you know, she killed it with the content or whatever. So they seemed like they were beasts. And he was like, yo, she's doing a Snapchat series. Like, you want to you wanna be a guest on a Snapchat series? And I was like, oh, I think that'd be dope. I said, I'll do it. But I said, can we get a TikTok or like a YouTube video out of it? Yeah. And he's like, uh, probably not YouTube vid, but, you know, maybe a TikTok. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, so I showed up, shot it. I don't think her Snapchat series actually even dropped. But no. um, we shot the TikTok. But then somebody was talking crap, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> as we were shooting it. So right. he's like, I'll bust your ass, man. I, like, watched you forever, but I'll bust you. I'm like, all right. Yeah. So I was like, maybe we'll play after. And so, like, we did get some of the BTS. And that's why they would, they didn't allow me. We filmed the whole day. But they, right. they didn't allow me to use anything except for the TikTok collab okay. with her. Nice. So that's why I didn't put a title. Also, because, like, my audience, they're, they're so keen on just, mm. just watching me embarrass somebody. That's the reason that they're there. If I do a straight lifestyle video, I get, like, 100K, 200K views only. Really? But... I'm just picky now. Like I look at the top YouTubers, like I said, Casey Neistat, David Dobrik. I don't, I say bangers only. I'm only, yeah. I'm only trying to drop if it's a banger. I used to do like filler videos that right. were like get me over, you know, because I haven't uploaded. Yeah. Now I try to just be picky, even if it takes a long time to get to the next one. Right. Because I just I just seen the growth from that and the momentum. You know what I mean? So I try to spam IG and TikTok. Nice. But but with YouTube, way more strategic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you um. Where, in terms of the business of being you, is the merch a huge part of it? Is the YouTube revenue still a big part of it? Like, what, what's the the biggest things that we would maybe even be surprised by? Well, Global Hooper goes crazy. Global Hooper goes crazy, yeah. So, and are you just wearing that or the the sleeve right now just for 
additional real estate to advertise, or is there any kind of functional purpose for this right now? Yeah, no, this is pure swag. It has no okay. <laughs> no elbow treatment. I'm assuming that this interview isn't that strenuous <laughs> on your body. Uh. <laughs> no, shout out to Iverson. He started that, and that elbow brace, that's what turned into the sleeve, just being for right. style. I but admit it is pretty cool in a weird way. You. I don't really know why. Yeah, yeah no, I try to dress like a... Uh, I try to just wear really loud outfits to try to give the merch more pop. You know mm. what I mean? But I seen a couple of people lifestyle the sleeve, and I was like, "Oh, that's hot! I like that." You know? Mm. So I started lifestyling it. And right now we have the 2099 collection. Um, everything's like a futuristic play, like some Back to the Future vibes. So wow! So you need these hater blockers. I brought you some. By you the way, you can play basketball on those. I did. Oh, it was my recent TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, that's cool. So I brought you some hater blockers.